William Sidney Porter, popularly known as O. Henry, was born in Greensboro, North Carolina, in America, 1862. Before he took up writing full-time, he worked as a pharmacist, draftsman, journalist, and even as a bank teller. O. Henry's stories revolve around the lives and aspirations of common people and often touch upon the themes of coincidence, deception, and faith. They are distinguished by his witty writing style and unexpected twists at the end. Cabbages and Kings was his first short story collection. The Four Million, another collection, includes masterpieces like The Gift of Magi and The Cop and the Anthem. The Last Leaf is a moving story of an artist who loses her will to live while fighting pneumonia. A fellow artist gives her hope at a heavy personal price. Let's see what happens in The Last Leaf by O. Henry. Sue and John C. were two young artists who shared a flat. Sometime in November, John C. fell sick with pneumonia. She did not seem to get better. She would lie in bed for hours, staring at nothing. Sue was worried about her. She called the doctor. Though the doctor came every day, John C. did not get better. The doctor then took Sue aside and asked her if John C. had something that was worrying her. His diagnosis was that John C. had lost the will to live. He further stated that medicines alone would not help John C. until she had made up her mind to live. Sue tried different things to help John C. She talked about clothes and fashion, but John C. did not reply. She brought her drawing board to John C.'s room. She whistled while she painted to distract John C. It was at that time that Sue noticed John C. whispering to herself. She quickly went to John C.'s side. John C. was looking out of the window and counting backwards from twelve. She stopped at seven. She looked out of the window and saw a creeper. There was a strong wind and the creeper was shedding its leaves. Sue anxiously asked John C. what the matter was. John C. whispered that the leaves of the creeper were falling. Three days ago, she said, there were hundreds of leaves, and now there were only five. John C. proclaimed that she would die when the last leaf fell. Sue told her to stop talking nonsense and went to get a bowl of soup for John C. John C., however, refused the soup. She told Sue that since she was going to die, eating did not matter to her any more. She only wanted to see the last leaf fall so that she could die in peace. Now Sue needed the light to finish the painting so she could sell it for some money. So she begged John C. to not look at the leaf while she was painting. John C. agreed but asked Sue to finish the painting quickly. Sue's painting was about an old miner. For her model, she had chosen Behrman. Behrman was a 60-year-old painter who lived in the same building. Behrman's dream was to paint a masterpiece. This dream, however, had eluded him so far. Sue went downstairs to talk to Behrman. She told him all about her worries for John C. Behrman, indignant, came upstairs with Sue to talk to John C. John C., however, had fallen asleep. Sue went to the window. There was only one leaf remaining on the creeper. It looked like it would fall soon. The next morning, John C. wanted to see the last leaf. Sue was scared, 
But on opening the curtains, she found the last leaf still standing. Sue exclaimed that the leaf looked strong and healthy. She thought that it was a sign that John C. would recover. John C. disagreed. That day, she waited for the leaf to fall. But the leaf remained strong despite the storm raging outside. John C. stared at the leaf all day. Finally, in the evening, she called Sue. She told Sue that she had been depressed and uncooperative while Sue had been taking such good care of her. The last leaf made her realize that she had been selfish and that she did not want to die. Sue hugged John C. and brought her soup. Next afternoon, the doctor came and examined John C. He proclaimed that John C. had found the will to live. He was confident she would recover soon. The doctor then told them that he was going downstairs to check on Berman. Berman was suffering from pneumonia and the prognosis wasn't good. The next morning Sue came to John C.'s bed and told her that Berman had passed away. He had been out in the stormy night. The janitor had found him shivering in his bed with wet clothes, brushes and paints strewn all around his bed. Sue then pointed out the last leaf to John C. It still looked strong and healthy. Berman had sacrificed his life to go out into the storm and paint the leaf onto the creeper. It was his masterpiece. So, the story, The Last Leaf, centers around the last leaf left on the ivy creeper. John C. connects her lifespan to the falling of the last leaf. She believes she will die when the last leaf falls. The painter Berman paints a realistic last leaf onto the creeper to give hope to John C. and provide her with the will to live. Therefore, the last leaf plays a vital role in the story. On one hand, it is linked with John C.'s illness, while on the other, it relates to an individual's capacity for sacrifice and their commitment to life.